A sunny evening in Hollywood Hills, a director nervously approaches a grand house, his eyes falling on a trail of blood, leading straight to the front door. Apparently, the previous director didn't make it out of their meeting, he whispers to himself. But this time will be different. Inside the house, the client dressed in red is sitting with a gun. That's me. In the last hour, a whole parade of directors came by, pitching me their big ideas. Let me tell you, one was worse than the other. So, hotshot, what do you got? You don't want to pitch? Nope. Okay, fine. Let me tell you the story of my life. I was a bright-eyed kid with golden hair and a father who brought joy to my life. He'd stand behind the door and we'd play knock-knock. But one day, he walked out the door and never came back. The game ended, so did everything else. After my father left, my mom fell into a deep depression and drowned in debt. I didn't want to add to her problems, so I ran away. As I got older, I grabbed the one opportunity open to broke young Americans. I joined the army. And let me tell you, Wade Wilson was a badass soldier. A savage with no mercy. Somewhere on this messy journey, I stumbled upon an angel, the love of my life. For a brief moment, happiness seemed real. But cancer doesn't care about happiness. When I got the diagnosis, my world shattered. To save her from the heartbreak of watching me die, I left. I threw myself into street fights, booze, and chaos, knowing my time was running out. With a stage for cancer, there wasn't much hope left. So when I was offered a chance to join a human experiment that could possibly save my life, I took it. Big mistake. The experiment didn't go as planned. I endured excruciating pain, lost all my hair and my skin. Ended up looking like a well-done hamburger. The doctors tried to kill me when things got out of control, but my body healed so fast that their attempts were useless. Painful, sure, but useless. Eventually, they tossed me into a prison for failed experiments. While I was locked up, I obsessed over my appearance, trying to find a solution for my disfigured skin. Spoiler alert, there wasn't one. But my story wasn't going to end in prison. So I did what any self-respecting anti-hero would do. I killed every guard and escaped. With a little practice, I sharpened my combat skills, grabbed two swords, threw on a red mask, and bam, Deadpool was born. Oh, and the colorful suit idea? I stole it straight out of the kids' comic book section. So, we've seen how Deadpool came to be, and how he got his powers, but let's dive deeper. What's really going on with his insane healing ability? How does it actually work? So it's time for a little science class. Alright, here's what we know so far. Wade Wilson had a stage 3, eventually stage 4 cancers in his lungs, liver, prostate and brain. Desperate to survive, he volunteered for the Weapon X program. The same program that bonded unbreakable adamantium to Wolverine's skeleton and turned his claws into deadly weapons. Wade became the 11th subject, following Logan, with one goal, transfer Wolverine's healing ability into Wade's DNA. And while it technically worked, it came with a huge twist. Let's compare. Wolverine's healing works like a well-oiled machine. His cells are healthy and constantly regenerating. So, when Wolverine gets hurt, his body simply replaces the damaged cells with new, perfectly functional ones. Deadpool, he's a whole different story. Why? Because of his cancer. After the Weapon X experiments, every cell in Wade's body became cancerous. Essentially, he turned into a walking, talking tumor, or as Deadpool himself would say, a cancerous hamburger. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Deadpool's healing ability isn't about fixing healthy cells. It's about replacing already damaged cancerous ones. His body is in a constant loop, replacing dead cells with new, equally damaged ones. That's why his face and body look the way they do. No matter how many times he regenerates, 
the new cells are just as messed up as the old ones. Since a lot of you are curious, let's dig a little deeper into the science. In the animal kingdom, there is a fascinating creature called the axolotl. This little salamander isn't just adorable, it has an incredible ability to regenerate almost anything. Limbs, organs, even parts of its brain. Here's how it works. The axolotl's body has two key players, proto-oncogenes, which act like a gas pedal to kickstart cell division, and tumor suppressor cells, which work like brakes to keep that division under control. This perfect balance allows the axolotl to rebuild lost body parts without the risk of cancer. But what happens when the brakes fail? That's when proto-oncogenes muted into oncogenes, causing uncontrolled cell growth and cancer. And this is exactly what happened to Deadpool. His body is like a car with a stuck accelerator and no brakes. His cells are constantly dividing and regenerating, but because they're cancerous, they don't know when to stop. The result? Deadpool can heal from anything. Even something as extreme as regenerating from a single drop of blood. But it's a chaotic, endless cycle, with his cancer and healing locked in a bizarre stalemate. Now, here's a wild thought. Humans also have proto-oncogenes and tumor suppressor cells. So why aren't we all regenerating like Deadpool? The simple answer? We can't control our cell division the way he can. Deadpool's mutation gives him a superhuman level of control, keeping him alive no matter what. And who knows, by studying creatures like the axolotl, maybe one day humanity could unlock the secret to regeneration. Imagine being able to heal from any injury, just like Deadpool. And there you have it guys, that's everything you need to know about Deadpool. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.